Hi, welcome back. This is the tutor. Okay, okay. I'm gonna look for it again. Welcome back. This is the tutor wizard. This is Jasper, and I'm Adrian. Oh, okay. She wants down. Please subscribe. You'll get uh, notifications for this series and others. Basically, this is video three for uh, Math 120 final review. Number six is going to ask us what determine if each set of vectors is a basis for our three. So we still want to you to know on the final exam what a basis of n dimensions is. Basically, it has to be linearly independent of the span. <coughs> But remember, specifically for us, I've got one of each case. We have the uh, anti goldilocks land where we have the number of vectors matches the dimension we're in, R3. Or we could have a less vectors than the dimension we're in. Or we could have more vectors than the dimension we're in. When we're discussing this, basically what we want to know is the first two are fairly easy. That's why I list them in this order. And then we'll actually have to make a calculation for this one. One, all we have to say is not a basis. Why? What's the justification? This is not a basis because there is only two vectors in R3, so they can not span R3 and therefore are not a basis. That one's done. For three, or for two, sorry. I, I. All we have to say is S is not a basis of R3. Why? What's the justification? There are four vectors, and that means that if I'm given four vectors in three space, they are not linearly independent, or they're linearly dependent, and therefore not a basis. So, in the two cases where we have less vectors than the dimension we're in, we're not a basis because we can't span R3. In the case where I'm given four vectors in three space, I can never be a basis because they are not linearly independent in R3. For the case that we have to check in anti-Goldilocks land, I call it, when we have just the right number of vectors, if I'm given three vectors in three space, they don't have to be a basis, but it's yes independent, yes spanning, yes basis, or no not independent, not a basis, and not spanning. So no, 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 or yes, yes, yes in the anti-Goldilocks land. Let's now check case three, where we have to actually check something. Okay, for three, S is actually a set of three vectors in three space. So we have to check. Because I've given three vectors in three space, and all I'm asked is, are they a basis? It's either yes, 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 or no, no, no. And checking linear independence is much easier than checking span. You'll see why in other videos. If you look below in the other videos in the lectures, we discuss this specifically. And it's much easier to check independence question than span. What is this independence question for us? This asks, if we have C1, v, we're going to call this V1, V2, and V3. If C1, V1 plus C2, V2 plus C3, V3 equals 0, that implies we get C1 equals 0, C2 equals 0, C3 equals 0 is the unique trivial solution to this homogeneous linear system. For us specifically, that gives us 1, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 0 equals 0, 0, 0 is the augmented matrix of that system, given this is V1, V2, and V3. What do I do with this? I now row reduce to see if I get the unique trivial solution. Right now we're asking if that happens. Now we're going to show it explicitly. This gives me replacing row 2 with row 2 plus row 1 gives me 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 3, 0, and I'm going to get adding, I'm going to get 0, 3, <coughs> 1. Now what are we going to do? I can subtract these rows to get a leading 1. Row 3 goes to row 3 minus row 2. This gives me 1, 1, 0. This never changes. I get 0, 3, 1, and then I'm going to get 0, 3 minus 3 is 0, 
zero minus one is minus one and zero minus zero is zero. What does this give me? Finally, getting rid of the leading coefficients, this gives me one, one, zero, zero, one, one third, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, zero. How do I know this is a unique solution now? This is REF. What that tells me already is C3 is zero. From the second equation that says C2 plus one third C3 equals zero, but he's zero. So that gives me C2 is zero. And from this equation that says C1 plus C2 equals zero, but C2 is zero. So that says C1 is zero. So I have the unique trivial solution. And this says yes, independent. Therefore, yes spanning and yes a basis. So this one is a basis. If you get where you get a row of zeros or infinitely many solutions, this means that it's not independent, therefore not spanning, therefore not a basis. But in this case, we got the unique trivial solution tells me yes independent, if and only if, yes spanning, therefore if and only if, yes a basis of R3. This is a basis. Next question, seven. Okay, for this one, number seven, what we're gonna do is use Kramer's rule to find X3. Again, on an exam, especially on one of my exams, if I give you a higher dimensional one or I give you a four dimensional, a four by four linear system or something like this, the way that we can get around this to make sure that you know what Kramer's rule is without having to solve the whole system is we'll just say, read the question carefully. This one's just saying find X3, not all of them. Let's remind ourselves what Kramer's rule is before we solve this. What Kramer's rule is saying is, if the determinant of A, the coefficient matrix, is not zero, then we have a unique solution. And it's given by X1 equals the determinant of A1 over the determinant of A. X2 is equal to the determinant of A2 over the determinant of A. And for a three-dimensional system, three by three system, X3 is the determinant of A3 over the determinant of A. Where what? What is the these A1, A1, A2, A3s? AI is the matrix obtained from A, the coefficient matrix, by replacing column I with this vector B. Let's do that explicitly. We need X3 is what the question wanted, X3. From our system, A is equal to 1, 0, 2, negative 2, 4, 5, negative 1, negative 2, 3, and B is equal to 1, 2, 1. The first thing I want to do is compute the determinant of A. If it's 0, then this doesn't apply and I can't use Kramer's rule. There is no unique solution, if and only if. All right. From that system to find x3, first I compute the determinant of a. The determinant of a is equal to the determinant of 1, 0, 2, negative 2, 4, 5, negative 1, negative 2, 3, which is equal to, what is this equal to? This is equal to cofactor expanded along the top row, or I could do row operations. However you want to do this, we have many options. Because it's three by three, what I'm doing is just one times the two by two determinant, four, five, negative two, three, minus zero. So I don't have to compute that one. Plus two times negative two, four, negative one, negative two. That will give me one times 12 plus 10 minus, or sorry, plus two times negative four plus four, which is zero. So this gives me 22. The determinant is 22, which is not zero. Therefore, I can continue and actually solve for x3. The determinant of a3 is equal to the determinant of 1, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 4, negative 2. And then we replace the third column with 1, 2, 1. 1, 2, 1. This equals, by cofactor expansion along the first row again, 1 times the determinant of 4, 2, negative 2, 1, minus 0 times, I don't care, because it's 0, plus, sorry, this time, 1 times the determinant of blocking off this and this, which will give me negative 2, 4, negative 1, negative 2. This gives me 1 times... <coughs> 4 plus 4 is 8, 
plus 1 times uh, what do I get? 4 plus 4 is 8. I get positive 4 and then minus minus 4 which is 8 again. Don't skip steps. Write it down if you have to. And this gives me 16. Therefore, x3 is given by the determinant of a3 over the determinant of a, which is now a number over a number. Let's write that quickly. x3, therefore, is equal to what? The determinant of a3 over the determinant of a, which is 16 over 22, which we can reduce, but this will be 8 over 11. But there's a unique solution, and all that asked for was x3, not x1 or x2. Please subscribe. You'll get notifications for this series and many other series that we're doing on this channel. I'll see you next time. For x3, I need a1, and that's determinant. The determinant of a1 is going to be what? The determinant of, I replace column 1 by b. So I get 1, 2, 1 instead of 1, minus 2, minus 1. And then the other two columns are the same, 0, 4, negative 2, 2, 5, 3. <coughs> What does that give me? Cofactor expanded along the top row again will give me 1 times this time 4, 5, negative 2, 3, plus or minus 0 though, so I don't care. And then times, this time it will change 2, 4, 1, negative 2, and that will give me 1 times 22 again, but this time plus 2 times negative 4 minus 4 is negative 8, so I'm going to get 22 minus 16, which is 6. Therefore, sorry, that should be a3. Ah, I just computed a1. Uh, uh, uh. All right, well, we just computed a1. I computed the wrong one. Read the questions carefully. It said x3. Let's try that again.